maybe that arrow is pointing that it is not central but uh, eccentrically located kind of uh, look maybe that arrow removed it looks like real popcorn uh, i don't know now the radiological appearance in the figure what do you see you find uh, the hyalur lymph nodes which are showing calcification which is what what is the only calcification of hyalur node examiner will ask egg shell calcification huh? so sarcoidosis silicosis there are multiple causes for egg shell calcification now doctor on mammography you found once more egg shell calcified areas in the breast so what does they indicate they indicate any post traumatic fat necrosis post surgery or idiopathic fat necrosis will lead to axial calcification on mammogram it does not indicate of fibroadenoma is what need to be remembered now the genital examination is showing absence of the testis undescended testis the other side testis is there so what are the three types of testis undescended testis retractile testis ectopic testis jo bhatakta hai wo ectopic jo latakta hai what is that undescended or retractile is the third type uh, three different types of testis atak gaya bhatak gaya latak gaya अटक गया इज अनडिसेंडेड क्योंकि वो डिसेंड नहीं हुआ लटक गया जो रिट्रैक्टल है जो भटक गया इक्टोपिक है इज अ टाइप ऑफ टेस्टिस सो ये भटकने वाले या अटक गए या लटकने वाले टेस्टिस है ये अटक गया अनडिसेंडेड टेस्टिस दैट्स व्हाट यू नीड टू रिमेंबर एंड इट कैन बी द सोर्स फॉर सेमिनोमा इज वॉट नीड टू बी रिमेंबर now you have been shown a condition of pancreas which is swollen pancreatitis is there but it is typically surrounding the duodenum hence it is an example of annular pancreas what are all the conditions associated with annular pancreas duodenal atresia down syndrome tracheoesophageal fistula etc etc then what do you see here pyroglossal cyst what is the most common location for pyroglossal cyst it is typically infrahyoid is what you need to basically remember now what you are finding is a testicular mass actually unless you feel it you you can't say uh, but uh, yeah you can also say sir i thought it as hydrocele instead of uh, uh, a mass over there so yeah that's right so in a patient above 50 if there is a testicular mass what is it most likely to be above 50 it is most likely to be mets secondary tumors of the testis are common than primary if it is more than 50 now the hands are typically showing dupitrans contracture same time if you look at the penile shaft it is showing an abnormal curvature so such a abnormally curved shaft of the penis where there is a fibrosis of the penile fascia along with the dupitrans contracture is basically called the peyronie's disease is what need to be remembered so dupitrans contracture can be associated erectile dysfunction can occur there can be a chronic inflammation of tunica albuginea is what you need to remember so some of you in future are going to be top urologists and uh, management of the male sexual organ you must be working like vishwakarma with a miraculous hands to once more restructure the entire vasculature and solve the problem of impotence is what uh, you should ask point for ms mch urology huh? the it's a jingle to listen last before week only one of my friend finished his uh, mch urology at the age of 42 thank god he saying after passing out of exam Another seven to eight years, we ourselves are vulnerable for benign prostatic hyperplasia. Before that, only we got the MCH urology at least. He did MBBS from Jupmer, MS from Jupmer. 
he was a top consultant surgeon but uh, his passion for urology has made him to leave all the practice and join MCH at the oblivion of life if at all we call uh, it as oblivion so at 37 he got topped entrance exam at 40 he finished it with three sweet daughters and a gynecologist wife he was saying oh my god till 40 I am like uh, still going for exam by vows, blah 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 huh? so that's the reason uh, enjoy this part of life in anticipation what we get tomorrow anyway you will all get MSMD take it granted everybody will do MSMD one or the other day everybody will marry everybody will produce children everybody buy a car everybody will fight with the spouse all that are there in the package deal given by God if life exists right so that is the reason enjoy it because getting into MS, uh, I still remember uh, that fellow when he got MS general surgery in Jipma, big celebration, right? So, we all thought the problems are all over, the problems started, right? So, that is the reason uh, we should enjoy while preparing for entrance because after you get MS, there is a different enjoyment, you are entering a different cohort. Now, what is this pancreatic lesion which is being shown? Classically, the pancreas is having a bubbling appearance and there is a sunray pattern of calcification. Sunray pattern of calcification. Lot of times, AIMS, PGA and other exams, this question was asked literally. Bubbly appearance with a sunray calcification means everybody used to Reflexly answer serous cyst adenoma of pancreas. But if a real CT of a bubbling pancreas with a sunray appearance shown, that time you are recognizing uh, is all the challenge is what you need to remember. A 60 year old has got a maroon colored stool per rectum. Suddenly you are thinking of rectum and 2D echo was given to you. In 2D echo, what is shown is a severe aortic stenosis, left ventricle to aorta. Virtually, the path is blocked by that stenotic uh, aortic valve. And it's severe aortic stenosis reflected on Doppler. So, what is that entity where you have uh, maroon colored bleeding per rectum along with aortic stenosis combination? Those who are having lower GIT vascular malformations will end up in GI bleeding, commonly they have an associated AS is uh, what you have to basically remember. Now, the intraoperative finding of the gut is showing pouchy appearance, multiple pouches are seen. You thought it is normal gut which is being uh, swollen like puri. No, no sir. So, you are also having uh, pouchy appearance classically when you did barium. So, they are jejunal diverticulate fundamentally. So, what is the common presenting feature of the jejunal diverticulate? So, there will be an ectopic gastric tissue which will show bleeding is a common uh, uh, presenting feature in addition to being asymptomatic, malabsorption, etc, etc. Sorry, uh, this was not ileum, no? Jejunal, no? Uh, Jejunal, that's what least likely because ileal Meckel's diverticulum leading to bleeding that is common. So, asymptomatic can be there, malabsorption can be there, abdominal pain, but not bleeding from ectopic gastric mucosa, which is more a feature of Meckel's diverticulum. Okay, then 30 year olds, recurrent abdominal pain, intermittent diarrhea, constipation, and thin built and uh, ill defined right lower abdominal mass. But before that, what is the abdominal radiography showing? It is showing multiple calcific uh, mesentric, mesentric lymph nodes which are calcified. And along with that, there is a fat stranding of the mesentery along with the lymph nodes, paraiotic area. So, all these favor possibility of tuberculosis fundamentally. So, what is the general rule? If TB is the option, TB is the answer, is the general rule. Apoptosis is the option, 
apoptosis is the answer. Now what do you see here? Excoriated skin. Excoriation of the skin is what you are seeing. What were you thinking? You are thinking of uh, a snow capped uh, mountain uh, uh, or something else is coming to mind. This is skin that is excoriated. In the middle there is a granulation tissue. I don't know how clear is the image for you. So, uh, out of all fistulae, duodenal fistulae contain lot of digestive enzymes. That is the reason whenever duodenal fistulae is there, the amount of skin excoriation is highest, is what you have to basically appreciate. Now, uh, uh, you have been shown a sinus which is perianal in location. What is this basically called as? Pyloneedal sinus. So, what is a wrong statement about uh, pyloneedal sinus? Just you need to review the literature. Now, perianally there is an abscess which is typically shown. What is the commonest organism? E. coli is the most common organism for a perianal abscess. Now, there is a herniation which is turned out to be metals diverticulum. Such a type of uh, herniation is called litter's hernia is what need to be. Once more clock weights, large ears, well pews, nerds, all these things. Hernia means, oh, you should herniate your brain with knowledge. Huh? Otherwise, uh, one mistake in very common topic is equal to going 500 ranks behind and generally if you are fit enough in preparation uh, you, do, you even involuntarily also you won't do common mistakes see you should be brimming with that natural confidence doctor by the time it is january January, December, you must be ready with that uh, normal confidence level, Sajana. I don't do mistake if it is TV based question. I won't do mistake if it is based on oncogenes. I don't do mistake if it is apoptosis. Like that, you should have your own strong terrains of common high yield topics. Rarely, if you ask some uh, Dick and uh, Tom uh, syndrome, nobody will anyway answer. So, don't worry about that. Now, 34 year old came for workup of infertility and ultrasound is showing multiple cysts. Most likely diagnosis PCOD. To diagnose PCOD, what is the criteria? Enlarged ovaries, ecogenic stroma, peripherally arranged follicles less than 10 mm and, uh, uh, and because they are all arranged in the periphery, they look like the string of perils. Right? Uh, they are all the important uh, sonographic criteria and tomorrow as gynecologists day in and day out affair to give a diagnosis of PCOD. Don't expect your sonologist will come and do. Gynecologists are only sonologists also. Right. So, uh, you yourself must know how to do the uh, obstetrical uh, ultrasound. Na? Now, there is an ovarian mass. What are the criteria to say that ovarian mass is malignant? Size more than 4, not less than 4. All the remaining are also necrosis, septal thickness, wall thickness, they are all the criteria to call it as malignant. Now, there are few questions which are theory in the middle uh, interspersed. Formaldehyde for embalming, what percentage? 40%. Dowry death up to 7 years. After death, blood remains fluid. Whenever septicemia, CO poisoning, hypofibrinogenemia, they are the cause of the death. The blood remains fluid. Then vocal cords are lined by stratified squamous epithelium. What is the cause of the hoarseness in an elderly man of more than 3 months duration? I mean hoarseness of more than 3 months duration, Indian English, not elderly man more than 3 months, cancel larynx, right? Then, 
masoid antrum lateral surface of the temporal bone what is that surface marking McEwen's triangle is what you need to remember type A tympanogram is normal AS is a shallow curve of otosclerosis AD is a deep curve of ossicular chain disruption B is otitis media X and uh, C is uh, uh, Eustachian tube blockade different uh, types of tympanograms one of the images will definitely come in exam simply saying the C is not enough next time we will show real C be sure examiner can be uh, too practical which we are not 38 year old clinical features what do you see vesicular lesions on the external ear otitis uh, herpes um, I mean Ramsey Hunt syndrome is what need to be remembered so uh, all the if you recognize Ramsey Hunt there are 4 or 5 points that you need to remember about Ramsey Hunt now doctor during palpation of hepatodiodinal ligaments a pulsation is felt dorsal to the right of the common bile duct then what is it likely to replace the, what is it likely to be so hepatic transplantation first liver transplantation Usmania general hospital Dr. Madhu is uh, from our college only Kakatiya medical college chief of surgical gastroenterology what a prodigious movement to do a liver transplant uh, which otherwise cost 30 40 lakhs whether patient dies or lives uh, is done in a government setup is a miracle so some of you are going to also become such miraculous surgeons in future so a replaced right hepatic artery is a very common anomaly uh, which can which is the most common variation of the hepatic arterial anatomy is what need to be remembered gallbladder epithelium what is the normal function it absorbs water it absorbs sodium chloride and it secretes h plus ion and it has nothing to do with bile acid absorption then black pigment versus brown pigment what conditions lead to black pigment any hemolysis it can be associated with cirrhosis but brown pigment stasis infection of the bile lead to development of brown pigment stones is what I want to underscore to all of you then which is not a feature of the gallstone disease out of all this there is a hyperechoic interluminal structure there are three sonographic criteria hyperechoic interluminal focus shadowing posterior to that focus uh, not enhancement acoustic enhancement is different shadowing is different right then movement of the focus with the change in the position of the patient is uh, are the three important ways by which you will realize ultrasound is typically showing what is it showing gallstone so patient is asymptomatic then what do you want to basically do observation asymptomatic cholelithiasis management surgery or no surgery is controversial in fact when uh, you become a senior surgeon you will uh, have your own uh, personal guideline whether to do surgery or not for a given patient huh? then uh, for acute cholecystitis what is the very early diagnosis you will do HIDA, PIPIDA are the two types of radionuclide scans so HIDA scan technetium 99 m per technate HIDA scan is the one which you will use once more doctor gallstones bile duct stones gallbladder carcinoma cholangiocarcinoma these 5 6 topics and their clinical management clinical presentation oh, everything you must wash the linen and come for the next mock test ok so Dr. Gautam has taught very well in the uh, online I mean anatomy to medicine.com video library on all the gastroenterology topics if you if you really can't sit half an hour and read in Bailey and Love within 15-20 minutes you can finish it in by listening the video but uh, 8 to 10 points about each of them you should have 
a hold. Huh? Then, doctor, 60-year-old alcoholic man, 24-hour history of nausea and vomiting. And uh, he underwent abdominal perineal resection. There is a distended, diffusely tender tympanitic abdomen. What are the possibilities? He being alcoholic, pancreatitis may be there with ileus. He having had undergone surgery, he can have adhesive bowel obstruction. And uh, he can have, because of the compression of the underlying, uh, uh, underlying rectal cancer, anything is possible, but not ascites is least likely possible is what need to be remembered. Then a 26 year old palpable abdominal mass, increased pigmentation of the lips and palms. Oh, so many clues have been given to you. And still if you don't, you don't need to look at the image also. Oh, it should be Pudzegar with intussusception. We are giving image only for our satisfaction. How do you know it is intussusception? Bubble within the bubble. Appearance, target sign is what you are typically seeing. Then doctor, a 15 year old lower quadrant pain is his only complaint. He has undergone appendicectomy in the past and upper GI radiograph is being shown to you which is typically showing the narrowing of the bubble. So, uh, what is the best step in his uh, management? So, you need to do a segmental dissection. Whenever there is a uh, inflammatory bubble leading to cicatrization of the bubble, which is transmural in pathology, you need to basically do the resection. Uh, but the point is, resection will it bring cure? Inflammatory bubble disease is an autoimmune phenomenon. So, if you show your anger on uh, the end organ which is burnt out, are you solving the underlying pathophysiology leading to that burning? Aapka gussa kiske upar utarna hai? Inflammation ke upar utarna hai? You need to give anti-inflammatory and bring down his inflammation, not showing your anger on a burnt out bubble because of that inflammation. So, but still, if complications arise, Crohn's being transmural, it can lead to a colovesical fistula, intestinal obstruction etc etc then that is an indication for surgical resection is what you have to basically remember one year after undergoing anthrectomy for Bildraw patient has developed the blind loop syndrome which is basically caused by the bacterial deconjugation of the bile salts which is leading to steatoria the pathophysiology which you need to be very sure 62 year old who has got abdominal pain and weight loss there is an abdominal imaging which has been done. You find lot of metastatic lesions to the small bubble. So, the question comes here is uh, what is the uh, likelihood uh, that can undergo metastasis, multiple metastasis uh, uh, in this given scenario. So, basically the common metastasis are all melanomas which will cutaneous melanomas which the, is the most common extra abdominal source of the metastasis that go to the small bubble is what you have to basically remember. A 54 year old who has got abdominal pain CD showing several hepatic lesions and uh, there is a mass in the mid ileum that means it is carcinoid. So, how does carcinoid basically present cutaneous phenomena like flushing etc etc are the things that are known to lead to carcinoid syndrome is what need to unless it goes to liver mets if it is sitting only in ileum it does not lead to syndrome only when it go to liver mets are there then the uh, serotonin end products become released and that lead to carcinoid syndrome of flushing etc etc is what need to be remembered now, my 85 year old with abdominal pain, tachycardic, oliguric and uh, abdominal radiograph. What is it showing? It is showing gas pattern into liver, bile duct, bile, biliary system. Gas in biliary system in the liver along with intestinal obstruction. What is it? 
make you remember a stone in the gall bladder traveled to the bile duct entered into second part of duodenum gone to the ileum and led to ileal obstruction utna lamba hai uska story so how will you basically manage you need to do endotomy and removal of the mass is considered to be the management of the gall stone um ileus is what need to be remembered then there was a uh, a incisional hernia repair which is being done because previous cesarean has led to incisional hernia during that you found a 60 cm lesion from the ileocecal valve you don't need image for that already you know only 60 cm लेंथ में क्या रहता मेकल्स डायवर्टिकुलम मेकल्स इज अ ट्रू डायवर्टिकुलम विथ ऑल द थ्री लेयर्स ऑफ द इंटरनल वॉल इज व्हाट यू हैव टू बेसिकली रिमेंबर 54 ईयर ओल्ड टू मंथ हिस्ट्री ऑफ एब्डोमिनल पेन विथ वेट लॉस इज देयर एंड लोअर एंडोस्कोपी वाज डन व्हिच इज नॉर्मल एंड देयर इज अ लीजन व्हिच इज बीइंग शोन इन अ फ्रोजन सेक्शन दिस इज द क्लासिकल अपीयरेंस ऑफ द of the carcinoid so what is the true thing about carcinoid the prognosis is related to the tumor size the location and the histological pattern is uh, the point of interest here then doctor uh here you are being shown a anomaly of the of the pancreas what do you find do do ducta hai स के अंदर दो डक्ट कहां रहते एल्डर ब्रदर यंगर ब्रदर डिवाइड होके दो दो घरा बनाए तो पैंट्रियाटिक डिविजन इज वॉट नीड टू बी रिमेंबर एनी फेल्ड फ्यूजन ऑफ द वेंट्रल एंड डोर्सल पैंट्रियाटिक डक्ट विल लीड टू पैंट्रियाटिक डिविजन वेर यू आर हैविंग वन डोर्सल डक्ट एंड वन मोर वेंट्रल डक्ट फेल्यूर ऑफ द फ्यूजन ऑफ द टू लीड टू पैंट्रियाटिक डिविजन is what you have to basically remember then doctor if you do maternal screening what is the best time fundamentally to identify down send ntd first semester is as good as second if it is downs but not for neural tube defects neural tube defects dekh dikhane ke liye dekhne ke liye फर्स्ट uh, ब्रेन का फॉर्मेशन होना है फर्स्ट ट्राइमिस्टर में कहा होता है फर्स्ट ट्राइमिस्टर में तो यू रियली कांट अप्रिशिएट द न्यूरल ट्यूब डिफेक्ट तो फर्स्ट ट्राइमिस्ट स्क्रीनिंग इज एज गुड एज सेकेंड फॉर डाउन्स इज वॉट नीड टू बी बेसिकली रिमेंबर रिगार्डिंग द प्रेगनेंसी एंड डेटिंग ऑफ द प्रेगनेंसी वेन इट इज वेरी एक्यूरेट डॉक्टर अल्ट्रासाउंड डेटिंग सेवन टू इलेवन weeks of pregnancy is the most appropriate time is what need to be basically remembered so be careful next time when you ask a date of a gynecologist because he has already lot of dates so uh, yeah or uh, you need to be careful because she is good at remembering dates so uh, you dated but you didn't attend that day evening means you are smashed huh? yeah krishna rightly says regular triad the radiological signs of intestinal obstruction where air percolates around the bowel wall intestinal perforation where you find bowel wall like a two contoured wall huh? all those radiological signs we will uh, have the all the discussion in the radiology uh, folder 30 hours radiology we will review it is indirect revision of uh, uh i hope all of you are getting your whatsapp messages of what is the today's class tomorrow's class in you know, the monday to friday if not please register your whatsapp so that uh, uh, you will get uh, what is the online class etc hmm? if you miss it also you will have, have it in video library <clears throat> now doctor a 32 year old delivery triage for her second episode of vaginal bleeding she has come she lives 45 minutes away from you and her husband is out of town 
she appears very unsettled and worried about the bleeding episode but she wants to go home and demanding to have a cesarean section in 4 days patients will demand be sure so huh? so her fetal heart rate is reassuring her demand is not reassuring for you right and she said that her husband is a attorney what will you do so you want to uh, take a risk of sending her home so what is the protocol the present recommendation is each episode of bleeding with a complete previa the patient should be admitted to the hospital for observation and an expectant management is what you have to basically remember then uh, 32 year old at 9 weeks of gestation with fatigue sore throat atypical lymphocytosis then uh, monospot is negative so what is the work up you want to do toxoplasmiosis is what you have to basically suspect so torch group of infections each of them five six points which will lead to cerebral calcification whose calcification is periventricular ha huh? everything you should be sure then doctor uh a 29 year old approximately 8 hours after the delivery patient's oxygen saturations are basically dropping down uh then there are fine crackles bilaterally at the lung bases so what is she basically passing through her baby was 150 by 80 so eclampsia leading to pulmonary edema is the presentation when eclampsia pulmonary edema is they giving iv fluids is foolish so it is not what you will basically do then doctor what is the risk factor for prophylactic antibiotics any prostatic valve mvp valve dysfunction etc etc they are all the important risk factors intrahepatic cholestasis then pup what is pup come on doctor p u p p what is the full form of it prurytic papular what else pregnancy may one of the three important differential diagnosis you must know intrahepatic cholestasis fatty liver of pregnancy pupp pup right i am not going to repeat already there is a discussion of it available in the online video library please review which occur in first trimester which occur in all trimesters which occur more commonly in third trimester which will recur which will not recur oh doctor life is obstetrics means uh conquerable subject obstetrics 50 55 topics if you choose and read nicely everything out of 30 marks 25 26 aaram se aate the 56 60 topics you know no in the list given eh? so uh intrahepatic cholestasis typically will lead to uh jaundice intense pruritus which is very troublesome which can typically complicate any part of trimester but most commonly in the third trimester is what you have to basically understand then what is the wrong statement out of it if you take sle the lupus the lupus flares during pregnancy are usually very mild see pregnancy itself is a autoimmune hyper situation are immuno compromised situation pregnancy immune immunity will step down the body will tell fetus will tell ma i am staying here please for some, some period of time ask your lymphocytes everybody to not attack me is what the prayer fetus will do to the mother so when the immune system bring comes down autoimmune conditions like sle also will be in good control so flare ups will be milder not severe is what you have to remember where will you give rogam is the very important question if the woman is rh positive rogam ka zarurat hi nahi hai if the mother is rh negative husband is rh positive fetus is rh positive then you are worried about giving it 
and uh, uh, if a woman is rh negative husband also rh negative she got anatomy seat husband got physiology seat beautiful life honestly beautiful life 5 o'clock both of them nice small car will be there huh? they can uh, take the carrier and then sit together come back home while coming pick up the children 5 o'clock means uh, you can tell hod 4 o'clock 3:30 only i will leave and uh, uh, cool life husband cardiologist wife gynecologist oh, hardly they will meet in one year probably one day they get time to sit together in the car i am i am talking about the front seat not the back seat but uh, the point is uh, they really don't get uh, time that much so be very sure how busy you want to become in life before going to counseling rh negative women but uh, uh, already positive d antibodies developed abhi rogam deke kya ka maza hai already she got immune iso sensitized who is the right woman rh negative woman and at 28 weeks of gestation d antibodies are not told but Lewis antibodies are positive. Still, she requires rogam to be given, which is immunoglobulin is what need to be remembered. So, what lead to macular toxicity, doctor? Intravitreally, <coughs> gentamicin, one hippal indole may cerebellar hemangioblastoma are found. Fracture neck of femur may lesser trochanter appears more prominent, not less prominent. Then. Uh, fracture neck of femur may internal fixation how will you do cancel screws screws nuts bolts the gadgets of orthopedics bolke there is a video in the anatomy to medicine.com video library so please take a chance to review the bossing of the frontal and parietal bones in the rickets you will see it at 6 months of age unilateral congenital dis dislocation 14 year already presenting with pain is an indication for hip replacement after reaching the adulthood so once more congenital telepathy equinovirus cdh inevitable topics in entrance exam third year if the baby comes what will you do first year what will you do in ctev club foot newborn baby what will you do all these things you must i don't know doctor when will you do at what age illisero technique of repair everything in congenital dislocation the thigh is shortened when the knees and hips are flexed to 90 degrees what do you basically call it as galiasis sign is what need to be remembered burst fracture is a unstable fracture not a stable fracture where there is a ring fracture of the first cervical vertebra is what need to be remembered so what is the common site of tb spine thoracolumba is what need to be remembered vertebral tb is generally paradiscal lower part of the upper upper part of the lower vertebra have a common embryological origin with an intervening intervertebral disc and since tb comes through hematogenous spread so obviously lower part of the upper vertebra upper part of the lower vertebra including disc paradiscal is the most common type of presentation of the tb is what you need to remember in posterior dislocation what do you have doctor padir flexion adduction in internal rotation the other one you have fevex flexion abduction external rotation huh? then what are the most common mechanism of injury of anterior dislocation fall on a i was uh, watching uh, this uh, shrimantudu movie every time hero will turn the hand i was thinking he is very good in courtier's maneuver huh? so uh, cut, cut 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 sound will come so easily he will be twisting and anybody jumps on him first he will twist the hand good nice uh, stunt have you watched it or not i uh, come on don't tell you are serious about entrance nobody is serious here about entrance be sure watch movies enjoy hip hop huh have a uh, uh fun and uh, top the seat after you get the seat don't forget to bring a pularedi sweet packet huh? 
So uh, that's the point, doctor. Fall on the outstretched hand with a shoulder abducted and externally rotated is what you need to basically remember.